Hello and welcome to the Omnex webinar, Enterprise Digitalization of Audits and Best Audit Practices. Today's webinar is being presented by Roy Gray, a consultant for Omnex, and Andre Samoyla, also a consultant for Omnex. Roy Gray has extensive quality management system experience that includes, but is not limited to, ISO 9001, IATF 16949, ISO 17025, ISO 14001, AS9100, FEMA, PPAP, VDA 6.3, SPC, Lean Six Sigma, Black Belt, Problem Solving, and many more. He is a certified VDA 6.3 Process Auditor, IATF 16949 Lead Auditor, and 17025 Auditor. Andre is also a consultant, and he has a strong background in automotive quality management systems and is certified in various areas, including IATF 16949 Lead Auditor and ISO 9001 Lead Auditor. During this webinar, if you have any questions for the presenters, please enter them in the Q&A box, and they will get them to the best of their ability at the end of the webinar. The webinar is being recorded and someone from Omnex will reach out to you with how to access the slides or the recording. All right, Roy, you can take it away. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Roy Gray. I've been with Omnex for uh, seven years now. And as Miles went through, you know, I've done extensive uh, implementations, uh, internal audits for our clients. Uh, so I, and in some cases, you know, back when I was in manufacturing, I wish I had some sort of software to manage my um, audit program because uh, it was very tedious. Okay. Um, So, you know, a little bit about Omnix, you know, we've been around for, you know, over 30 years. We, we've we got uh, offices worldwide. So, you know, if you need assistance, not only consulting, but if you're looking for software solutions, uh, Omnix can help you. Um, so a little bit about us. Again, we've been here in 35 years. Uh, we do have offices in uh, Germany, uh, India, and China. Uh, so we, we have uh, several offices, satellite offices as well. Uh, over 700 employees worldwide. So uh, we do have uh, uh, people within Omnix that they um, <clears throat> have uh, worked with the uh, uh, TC committees, you know, writing the standards and uh, different things like that. We've got members from AIAG um, that uh, are members of our consulting team that work with AIAG, you know, writing the core toolbooks and things like that. So, um, again, this is just where we're located worldwide. Okay. Uh, we are headquartered here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, and, and then we got uh, uh, different uh, regional. Uh, headquarters and offices throughout the, the globe. Our target markets, you know, uh, yes, we do automotive. You know, we work with automotive uh, suppliers, uh, implementing, doing audits, uh, various things like that. We work with uh, in aerospace as well. We have uh, multiple consultants that uh, uh, know the aerospace and work with our clients there. Uh, we've also done a lot of work with semiconductor organizations as well, okay? Uh, we do have uh, consultants that uh, work within the medical device industry. So uh, they're, they're very knowledgeable in that area, and we can always help there. And of course, we are also uh, working with suppliers and uh, OEMs in regards to the electric and autonomous vehicles, okay? So... We, we work within that uh, frame as well. And then of course, general manufacturing. So we, we can help a lot of organizations, not only uh, with our consulting services, but with our software products that we have. 
okay? Uh, different services that Omnix has, uh, you know, we, we do gap analysis, we do training and certification. Uh, we also do internal audits for uh, our, our clients that, uh, that uh, contract that out for us. Uh, we do implementations, we coach. Um, I, I do a lot of coaching with internal auditors as I implement and work with uh, their internal auditors and help them to uh, get better at what they do, okay? Uh, we also have engineering design services and software, um, and then also, you know, product certification. We work uh, with that as well. Uh, seven levers of automotive uh, industry. So obviously it's going to start with I, IATF 16949. Okay. That, that is the quality management system standard we have to adhere to that's uh, required by uh, the OEMs and then slow down throughout the supply chain. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, for functional safety, ISO 26262. Um, you know, especially where we have, uh, you know, uh, safety products that's been identified, we're going to have to implement this and uh, stay up on it. And then also when we talk about automotive spice or a spice, uh, we are uh, that that's the quality assurance program for software developers. And, you know, we have to make sure that we're going to meet those requirements along with uh, and it's also linked with uh, ISO 26262 as well. So there's different things that we're going to have to do there. And of course, you know, as you go through IETF 16949, it says in several clauses there that, uh, you know, if you are developing software, you need to implement um, a quality assurance program for software development. Uh, and most OEMs now are saying we, at least the Detroit 3 are saying we want uh our suppliers to implement a spice okay uh the different supply chain practices uh so you know we 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 can work with uh different suppliers uh, implementing uh functional safety or iso 26262 um a spice uh we we have uh multiple smes that can do that okay uh and then also you know looking at sota for you know uh safety of the intended functionality you know, making sure that the products are going to be used and try and identify how can they be used that are not, that's not intended. So try and prevent that, make sure that happens. Um, then also with product cybersecurity, ensuring that, um, uh, you know, at, with all the software that goes into the vehicles today that, uh, you know, we, we've got good practices and we're going to prevent any uh, cyber attacks on the vehicles, Okay. And then last, uh, Agile APQP, okay? Uh, just some of our customers that uh, we've worked with uh, worldwide, okay? Uh, not only consulting, but uh, uh, also implementing our software there. So we have uh, many customers that is using our software. So why would we choose Omnix? Well, we have a wide range of uh, uh, different modules within the uh, our software. Uh, you know, we've got the uh, uh, APQP, okay, APQP PPAT manager. You know, for managing the projects that uh, we are implementing. Uh, and then we got AquaPro that creates the process flow diagram, PFMEAs, control plans. Okay, uh, we also have Problem Solver and. Uh, uh, to help with our uh, corrective actions that we have to do, okay? And then also AutoPro, just to name some. And we're, we're going to talk a little bit, I'm going to talk a little bit about AutoPro, um, you know, what is happening that I see in most organizations today when I go in and do an audit. <laughs> so uh, most of the organizations I go into and I do audits, uh, they have a, manual process for scheduling and ensuring and monitoring the internal audits and the corrective actions. Uh, it's very time consuming. Okay. Um, so uh, in most cases, it's an Excel format that they're using to further schedule. It's very basic. Um, but, uh, you know, if you were to use Audit Pro, uh, definitely you, you can schedule the whole year worth of audits. And it's not just 
for one management system, you can do multiple uh, schedule multiple audits throughout the year for the different uh, management system standards. Uh, you can also put in there, you know, for the um, certification body audits, and you can also put in there for doing supplier audits. Okay. So, and, and when you schedule it, you know, you go in, you choose the month and the week that you want to do this, and, and you can start the whole process, and you can get it done uh, very quickly, okay? And then also, as you go through and start scheduling the audits, you identify who's going to be the auditor, lead auditor, co-auditor, and also who is the auditee, okay? Uh, and then once that is also, once that's all done, you know, it will automatically send emails out to the auditors and auditees, notifying them that the, the, there's going to be an audit coming up. Okay. Um, again, as I mentioned, you can uh, have multiple management system standards uh, within Audit Pro. You can keep track of all of those. Okay. Um, and also, as I go through and looking at the manual, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the manual process, you know, the changes are made to the um, audit schedule or the audit plan uh, throughout the year for various reasons, okay? Uh, and those changes don't get documented uh, within Excel, okay? So uh, it, it's hard to tell what's happening from day to day, month to month, okay? Uh, but if you make a change within Audit Pro, uh, before you can even save that change, uh, it's going to require you to identify what the change is um, and, you know, uh, and, and then it saves that change. So now we get some audit trail uh, or documented evidence to go through. Why did we make this change? And it could be, you know, I'm, we had a non-conformance. I'm increasing it or customer complaint. I, I need to in increase the frequency, whatever it might be. Okay. Um, also with an audit pro. Typically, uh, internal auditors, you know, they need to prepare to do their internal audit. So they come up with a checklist or facts to be verified. Um, and it's different every time. Okay. I'm not saying that the auditor should not still prepare uh, and maybe have additional notes. But uh, by using Audit Pro, you can come up with a standard checklist or facts to be verified uh, following the process approach to ensure that we get everything covered. OK, and, and then with that checklist, it, it stays there and you make changes as necessary. And of course, the internal auditors can use this uh, for ensure that they covered everything in the process or processes that they are auditing. Uh, and then conducting the internal audit. So, you know, we, we've got uh, audit agendas that uh, uh, depending on how, how the internal audit process is set up, they, they should be created. But if you're going to go to a supplier and do an audit, you need to uh, put together an audit agenda. You can do that right in Audit Pro. Um, and once you complete the audit report, you know, it attaches it right to the audit report. Okay. So, uh, and, and of course, you can also save the uh, um, audit plans and use them for in future. So, you know, it, it may not change from year to year or month to month. So you can use the same one. You don't have to rec recreate it every time. Okay. Um, and then, of course, when we go through the uh, audit process itself, we get we may have multiple auditors. Um, so we have, um, you know, using Word or Excel, only one person at a time can go in and update the um, uh, the audit uh, report. Um, but uh, Within um, uh, Audit Pro, you know, all the auditors can access the report, put their information in um, from the audit, and they can go from there, okay? Um, and, and then, you know, once the audit is complete, you know, you're going to publish the audit report. Uh, you'll be able to print it as needed. Uh, and then at, at the, once we get all, everything in there, um, you know, we can publish it for approval and then provide it to the auditee, okay? Or internally to top management uh, so that they're aware of what's going on with the audits. Um, 
nonconformance is opportunities for improvement. <coughs> um, internal audits should be finding a lot of nonconformances. Okay, uh, as the auditors are going through, um, they you know, typing up the report and within Audit Pro, uh, they can then go right and, you know, they, they uh, identified a nonconformance. They can go right into the nonconformance management system uh, from the report, or they can do it from the scheduling portion of it uh, and put in the um, nonconformance. You know, we, we've got everything that we need right in there. What's the nonconformance statement? Um and then also when we write the nonconformances, we need to, you know, cite the uh, the requirement. So uh, doing it manually, you got to look at the standard and, you know, uh, type it in by hand. But uh, by using AutoPro, uh, all the management system standards that are required for your organization, they're right there within AutoPro. You uh, identify the clause that you need, you click on that clause, and it will automatically populate uh, the requirement that we need to meet. Okay. Um, and it's the same thing to, um, uh, for opportunities improvement, you know, we identify it, we can upload it right into audit pro and we can identify and, and monitor, um, the nonconformances, the corrective actions that go with those. Okay. Uh, and speaking of the corrective actions, so, you know, we need to monitor the corrective actions, uh, Every organization could be a little bit different. They're going to have, um, you know, a, a time frame for when the corrective actions need to be completed, you know, for, you know, the, the containment, the uh, root cause analysis and, and what the corrective action is. Um, so uh, we need to make sure that um, that uh, is identified and we monitor those. And, uh, and of course, doing it manually, it's, it takes a lot of effort, takes away a lot of your time throughout the day to make sure that everything's getting, is on schedule to be completed, okay? Um, but uh, with Audit Pro, you can monitor it right from your dashboard, okay? Uh, it, it's easy enough to do. Um, and, and then, you know, once, if it goes past the, the due date for the corrective action, uh, an escalation email is going to be sent out not only to the auditors, uh, uh, the audit manager, okay, um, but uh, it'll also go out to the auditee that they are um, behind schedule on this so we can monitor it, okay? And, and then once the corrective action is all complete, the uh, auditor that wrote the nonconformance, they're going to be notified by email that uh, the auditee has completed uh, their corrective action. So uh, as the auditor, I'm going to go in, I'm going to look to see what they did, what their corrective action is, and then I can go out and verify that. Okay. Uh, and if I'm satisfied with what they're doing, um, and, and I'll, you want to make sure it's uh, going to be effective. I document what I've seen to ensure that it's effective and I can either accept it or reject it. And, mark, and once I do that, that will close out the audit. Okay. Um, so uh, again, everything's submitted right through audit pro. Uh, it's all in one place. If you're doing it manually, you know, it, either you go straight into your corrective action process and, uh, log it into your log, and then you got to track all of that. And again, with audit pro, you can do that automatically and observe, um, monitor, just looking at your dashboard that uh, can be established. <laughs> uh, pretty much talked about this. Uh, again, it's very time consuming for the um, internal auditor manager to go through and monitor all the internal audits. Uh, what's the status of them, the corrective actions. Um, so, but again, by uh, setting up your dashboard as the internal auditor manager, uh, you can uh, monitor everything that's going on and make sure that we stay on track. Okay. Uh, also, within Audit Pro, we can establish the uh, different uh, manufacturing process audits that we need to do. Again, you schedule it the same way as you would a uh, system audit. Um, and manufacturing process audits, you know, the layer process audits, uh, you can establish a checklist for that as well, making sure each layer is covered. 
Uh, you can put in the different CQI requirements as well. Okay, the different uh, CQIs, the uh, nines, 11s to 12, so on and so forth in there. And you can monitor all of that. Um, and then of course, if you use VDA 6.3 as your manufacturing process audit, you know, you can use, uh, uh, go through the checklist within VDA 6.3. We have that in our software. Okay. Uh, and you go through and you look at the questions and you score them just like you would uh, anything else. Okay. Um, and then it'll come up and give you a report to see how well we're doing. Okay. Um, and, and so that's uh, it for me. I'm going to turn it over to um, Andre. And Andre's going to take it from here. Thank you, Roy. <clears throat> uh, good morning or good afternoon to all of the team members. Um, thank you for your for your presentation. Um, okay, so I think uh, it was a comprehensive uh, induction, let's say, and also really positive uh, uh, thoughts presented by by Roy. So. By continuing, I'd like to just add um, a bit more, let's say, for the Audit Pro when it comes to the enterprise digitalization of audits. And I'll start with the key features. So a um, few of the key features um, that we have is look and feel, outstanding dashboards and reports. Uh, we have no and less programming. Uh, we have more options for data representations. We have the ability to tag a specific filter of report and share. Um, we can import data. And you, you will see once I'm going to dive uh, into the uh, software, the fact that you can import your checklists, your uh, different kind of, of um, formats, text as well, and many others. We also have the ability to export to different formats like CSV, PDF, uh, Excel spreadsheets, and so on and so forth. Um, as well, the dashboards can be shared into a SharePoint and also can be viewed in different platforms like iPhone and Android. Uh, along with, with um, the web version of the audit pro, it is very important for me to mention the fact that um, we also have an app developed for this. And we are also actively developing the uh, AI for Audit Pro app, but also some other modules. So, um, Roy, if that's okay for you, I'll share my screen now. Sure. I'll just go through the um, PowerPoint for a few more minutes. Uh, so, now my screen should be visible okay all right so i presented you few few key features let's see but i'd also like to present you some benefits as well so um, audit management system our software solution is capable of planning scheduling conducting and close audits in all disciplines and here i can mention some safety uh, qms ims as well we can perform internal, external customer and supplier audits using the same um, module, the same audit pro. You will not have, I don't know, uh, multiple pages. It's just going to be everything in one page. And again, you will see that in, in, in a second. Audit scheduling. We are capable to manage all the different audit cycle, uh, life cycles from planning to closure. Um, the option of conducting audits, um, I would call this intelligent audit checklists, right? Dynamically changing based on findings. Again, I will showcase this into the um, into the software solution, and I'm also cautious about the time as well. So, um, directly into the software, both auditors and auditees are capable to respond and also. Um, uh, close or uh, open, let's say, uh, action plans and close the action plans uh, without having to, to uh, communicate too much. It's just going to be everything done by the software because the software, as Roy mentioned, triggers emails, right, uh, between each other, okay? 
We have the ability to also do not only process system product audits based on multiple standards, but we also can perform layer process audits. Okay. All right. So that would be a few of the benefits, along with the fact that everything would be on the one uh, platform, which is wide, uh, which is web based. So I'm going to move a little bit now from the web based to actual uh, platform that we have uh, into our into our software. So as you can see here, we have a total of 14 modules and audit pro is just one of them and they can work independently, but also can communicate to each other. So to just put that into a bit more context, just imagine this. We have the audit pro module, which again incorporates an app as well. And we plan an audit, but also we conduct and we keep records of these audits, right? Just like a normal practice, best practice. And Audit Pro can communicate with Document Pro directly. And Document Pro would make sure that uh, document control it is followed, right? So Document Pro would be like a, a repository area for all of the audits, including audit schedules as well which obviously, once these documents are stored into Document Pro, they can be shared, they can be uh, made available for all of the team members. Not only that, the Audit Pro communicates with Document Pro, but the Audit Pro can communicate directly with Problem Solver, yeah, which is another module, and the Problem Solver would help supporting the organizations in audit closure by choosing multiple problem solving tools and uh, ways of solving problems. And definitely, as I mentioned to you, can communicate with all of these modules, um, including, for example, BOSS, which is dashboards and reports. And I will touch base in a second on, on dashboards and reports. So I think it's really important for us to, to uh, mention the fact that we don't only have one um, digitalized version, let's say, of one practice. You can see we have a combination of, of 14 modules, which goes under one platform and could be visible on the one, um, on the one page. Okay. Our software solution, one second, our software solution, uh, as mentioned to you, it is an enterprise wide web-based system. What does it mean? It just uses a URL. That's one very important point. It doesn't It doesn't require any development, coding, and so on and so forth. Uh, it can be used from phone, from tablet, from your PC, and so on and so forth. The software has the capability of managing multiple sites. In fact, one of our current customers has more than 300 sites. So they are using the, the Audit Pro. Uh, software solution. It also supports multi-language and multi-date. And to put that into prospect, in Europe, for example, because I'm based in Europe, in, in, in Berlin, um, we use day, day, month, month, year, 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 while in US, it, it is used month, month, day, day. So we support multi-language and multi-date. And to mention a few of the languages, more than 10, English, Chinese, Spanish, German, French, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, it supports integrated email notifications, reminders, and escalations. So the software automatically, based on how did we set it at the beginning, will trigger emails, reminders, and also escalations. Uh, it's also ready to integrate with legacy and ERP systems. Okay. And I would now stop here with the PowerPoint presentation. Um, and we will have some upcoming public public trainings for the um, audit management. And you, you can see them all here with dates and when these are going to take place, right? Related audit courses. Okay.
I will have to stop sharing for one moment, and then I will ha I will uh, dive into the software solution. Okay. All right. So let me just. Okay. So I'll start sharing my screen now because I would like to start with the fact that from now on, I will combine the live demo with what already Roy mentioned. And he mentioned about dashboards and reports and how the, the, each user can visualize the data based on his or her own preference, right? And you can see here, I've got, this is how it's going to look, the main landing page of Audit Pro, okay? And here, I am logged as Anthony John, as user. The user itself, it's also auditor, auditee, but also part of the top management. So he has a visualization for all of these data, which could be, so I'll have to apply a filter here, for all of the data which is inside of the software, right? So what does it tell me, the dashboards and reports? It gives me the possibility to, to drill into my data and conduct all sorts of analysis. And these are just the dashboards. I also have the, the possibility um, to, to uh, have my reports, right? You can see I've got findings by cause and sub-cause. I've got finding status. I've got closure status as well. Right, and you can see I've got also more closure status. And the, the data is captured as we partner with, with a business intelligence company in however the, the organizations want. Like in my case now, I've got the data structured by the year and also by the quarters, 2021, 2022. Then I can apply filters from here. I can also go and select the top three. And you see here the information about all, uh, uh, open and close changed, right? But then directly from here, from this screen, I have the ability to switch from viewing to editing, add some visualizations as new annotation. And I would say me acting now as Anthony John, part of the management, and I will say here, team by, by the next management review on October 3rd, please prepare, prepare an action plan for all open uh, audits. Right, And currently, many organizations, because I personally also have the experience on being part of multiple organizations, right? Um, all this operation is done in Excel, taken screenshots, and really time consumed to be put into a nice PowerPoint presentation and shared with the, the, the top executives. So I added this annotation here and the software itself, it can export all or only one page directly into PowerPoint. So you can see I've got the opportunity to export on only the active page, but also all pages into a nice PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to call now all of the pages. Once I clicked on OK, you will see that uh, the software already started to export into PowerPoint, right? And in a second, this inf all this information would be exported in PowerPoint presentation, just like here. Including the annotation as well, which you can add few informations if you want, and then share it to the, to the top executives, or even internally with the team. As I mentioned to you, you can see I've got also the annotation here. 
right? I think that's a nice feature. Okay, so that would be about the dashboards and the reports options. So this, as I mentioned to you, it's really uh, editable and customizable based on each user. Meaning to say, each user has the ability to add more widgets here, for example, or remove widgets. What does it mean? What do I mean with widgets? Is the fact that, like, you have on your phone the WhatsApp, for example, on on the first uh, on your main landing page on your phone. That's going to be the widget also for the for the dashboard. You can add, bring them here in the main landing page. Um, and you also have, as a user, as mentioned to you, I'm Anthony John now, right? I have the ability to add multiple landing pages as well, okay? That was, on a high level, a, a quick introduction of the software dashboards and reports visualization, which helps top management and not only to visualize data um, and improve uh, visual management as well. Now, I would like to dive a little bit more into actual audit. Some of the great features, which I'm going to start with now, is the fact that, if you remember, I mentioned the fact that we can import uh, Excel spreadsheets. So let's imagine I will be now um, acting, let's imagine, one second, let's imagine I will act now as the global quality manager, for example, right? And I'm going to say I would like to standardize all of the check checklists which I will be using for the LPA, for example, layer process audit. So then I, I would say, Team Omnix, I've got a number of 20 checklists in Excel spreadsheet. They are already defined. I need them into the... Um, into the software solution. Okay, not a problem. We go and we will, you can see I've got here an option, click on the checklist and have the ability to import the checklist in Excel spreadsheet. And this is how it's going to look a checklist. But obviously this is just for, um, for example, for LPA. We don't only have one quality standard like, like LPA. We have multiple on the standards as well, as you can see here. We can define our own LPA categories. We can define our uh, audit modes and layers. Also, equipment as well. But one one important uh, fact is, is is the fact that you will have the ability to, to add new standards in. As you can see here, I've got multiple standards added or available. And that's part of the same module. There is no hidden uh, areas, let's say, that you have to activate and so on and so forth. Now, everything goes under one um, module and there is no limitation in terms of creating uh, or adding new standards. So that would be, uh, as I mentioned to you, the quick introduction of the Audit Pro itself. I would then like uh, to continue by explaining to you that all of the modules are on one single area. We tried as much as we could to minimize the number of clicks that the user has to do in order to go from one area to another one. So me as Anthony John, as I mentioned to you, I will now go in the audits area and you can see that I've got multiple rights myself as top management. I have the rights of being a scheduler and I have the ability to uh, create audit planning for LPA for multiple standards, which I'm going to show you next. I have the ability to visualize and perform audits because I can act as an auditor, but I, I can also act as an auditee or some other audits. Okay? So when it comes to scheduling the audit, because at the end of the day, that would be the first step, right? 
we will have to define some audit schedules. And if, if we have multiple sites, we might have audit schedules for sites and we have uh, audit schedules for the corporate, right? So we can do that very easy. If we speak about LPA, we can go and do an LPA schedule. If we speak overall, we can go and select audit schedule. Once I select audit schedule, the software gives me the possibility directly to create a new audit schedule from this view. Okay, I don't have to go and click, as I mentioned to you multiple times, to get to an area that I would like to create a new schedule. So I have the ability to create a new schedule for here, but also if we say, I'd like to delete these uh, three new three schedules because they are very old, then you can do it, not a problem, okay? Now I would like to focus a little bit, let's say I'm gonna pick one of the um, schedules, IMS 2022, for example. When I select the audit schedule on the 2022, you will also um, see the fact that I'll have all of the audits under one audit schedule. Okay? So they are grouped under one um, audit schedule. <clears throat> Just like this. Right? You can see I've got the IMS audit schedule. So me as a global quality director, I'm going to say, right, okay, I'd like to create schedules for um, ISO 14001 and 45001, but also combine it with 14001 and 9001 as well. So you can have all of these audit standards under one schedule. And when when each user would, would open the audit schedule, would see exactly the same thing and will update in real time as well, okay? You see, would be color coded as well. I have the ability to visualize based on each month, but also by weeks, okay? I can move on the left, I can move on the right, meaning to say that I can move from April to May, June, July, and so on and so forth. And I have the visibility in terms of what audits are about to happen and when, okay? So that it is how we can create and visualize an audit schedule, okay? No matter what would be the standards, right? Now, let's consider I created the audit schedule and now I will conduct, me as an auditor, I will conduct the audit. So what do I have to do? I'll act as an auditor and then I will select perform audit. By performing the audit, you will see that I, I will have all of the list of audits which were allocated to myself as an auditor. Yeah. And then I'm going to select one of them, for example. I'm just going to pick one of them, for example, IMS 2022, this one. And at the very first um, line, let's say, I will have the audit details, but something it is flickering here. So the software would highlight if you have uh, audit findings, previous audit findings, which are not closed. So you'll have to click there to identify what exactly it is. So you have the information about the audit, then I will have a checklist. I'll have the opening meeting and closing meeting as well, like the agenda. And I'll have the opportunity to go into my uh, audit report. Right, one second. Right. One second, let's take this on the top. What exactly is the um, audit checklist is the area where which I we set internally, let's say, as an organization, and the auditor would have to follow. I'm sure everybody it is um, more than uh, more than used with uh, with this uh, checklist, let's say. So we have here the um, ISO fourteen thousand and one checklist. I've got ISO forty five thousand and one checklist, and also nine thousand and one checklist. 
So me as an auditor, I would have to go through each of the points and I have the ability to say, is it environmental management system okay? I'm going to say yes or no. I have the ability to add here comments and also add attachments. Exactly the same thing can be done from a phone. The difference is you would be able to take, using the app, you would be able to take uh, pictures directly on the, on the shop floor, right? And you don't need to have internet connection because once you conduct the audit and sync all the data, you'll have that available, right? So point by point, me as an auditor, I'll have to assess uh, during the time I conduct the audit and I will be able to say, yes, no, not applicable. This can be definitely changed. For example, VD6.3 has 0, 2, 4, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? Um, some others have um, minor, major, and OFI, for example, here. Yeah? How the software reacts when a non-conformity has been identified and this selection is done with environmental objectives, are they followed? No. Once I select this no, you will see that the auditor immediately has the ability to create a non-conformity or upload a non-conformity directly here. And you can see I've got the non-conformity here. I have the ability to populate this information with the uh, non-conformity findings, objective evidence. I can choose the clause as well. Me as an auditor, I'll also have the ability to select, is it a minor or a major? or might be an OFI as well. I have the ability to also show, um, uh, show to all users, meaning to say which are part of a CFT group, right? Customer focus team. Who requested it? In my case, is Anthony John. Then I will be able to uh, select what would be the ODT response approach, which me as an auditor, I will expect from, right? So by default now, because I set the system in this way, it is a corrective action report. But when I click on this drop down button, you will see that I'll, I'll have multiple options of choosing from L0. Based on criticality, I have the ability to choose. L0, for example, it is a minor, a minor finding and you just need to have a quick reaction from the supervisor, manager, you name it, then you can select L0. If you select a D report, the criticality might be a bit higher, let's say, and you ask by default to have uh, a 5Y, uh, 5W2 agent, uh, all of the uh, problem solving uh, tools, right? As well, 70, uh, 70, CAR, PRR, advanced uh, corrective action report. We also have PDCA as well incorporated, okay? And then I would be able to define the NC description, which NC description with, will automatically go into my reports. Okay. Then I, as I mentioned to you, will have the ability to connect the Audit Pro with Document Pro. So I can refer from the repository area where I keep my procedures, where I keep my uh, forms where I keep my policies and so on and so forth, right? And then click on save. That would be it. In this way, I created a new uh, uh, non-conformity. Well, we all know that we don't look after non-conformities. We look after conformity. But unfortunately, most of the cases ends, ends up in uh, non-conformities, right? So let me just scroll up. How does it look a non-conformity? once raised, it, it will look exactly like the one which I have here displayed, yeah? So me as an auditor, obviously I have the ability to upload an NC triggered by the fact that I selected, is that standard uh, achieved? No, I can do it directly there, or I can directly upload an NC using this option and also OFI as well. Okay, so once I selected, I uh, I conducted my audit into that specific area. Yeah, you can see site internal, corporate 
uh, headquarters. That's the, the number of the audit. I will then have the ability and I will submit my findings and also audit report to the ODT. Okay? Now, the ODT, I, my part of role is now part completed, right? Because I conducted my audit using uh, uh, using this uh, report, right? And then I'm going to submit it to the ODT and expect the ODT to come back with an action plan depending on um, the, the problem solving tool which I requested to be uh, followed as corrective action report into the feedback, right? So now I mentioned to you that I was acting as an auditor. As mentioned to you, me as an auditor, I did my part, let's say, with conducting the audit. I'll pause now, and then the ODT comes into the role. So me as an ODT, I'll have the ability to go into corrective actions. And once I click corrective actions, I will have the ability to see all of my audits designated to myself. Now, if you remember, um, the action which I, uh, sorry, the finding which I raised was for another um, ODT. Now, I am acting as an ODT. So when I receive, <coughs> excuse me, when I receive the uh, audit report from the auditor, like audit number 2387, I have the ability to immediately have a look on the audit report. Okay. So I have the ability to visualize the audit report, obviously, logos and some other uh, uh, small uh, things can, can be changed without any problem. So then, once the auditor sent me this report, not only that I will have it into my corrective actions, but the system will send me an email saying, hey, Anthony, you have a, you have a, uh, an action plan for the audit report 2387. Please click to this hyperlink to go to the audit. So that's one option. The second option, let's see you, you uh, log into the system and you have uh, the option to go into your notifications. You see this notification bell. And third option would be um, I have the ability to check my actions. All of these three methods will send you on the same page, which is going to be this. So then I will select my um, audit report. I can see what's the audit report. Yeah. And you see that I've got the possibility to populate all of these um, to all, uh, all of these fields. And then I have the ability to choose the five by and uh, submit it, complete the five by and send it back to the uh, auditor for approval. Then obviously, auditor goes back into uh, into the perform audit. Select the audit itself. Yeah, like two, three, eight, seven, and then has the ability to close out the audit. Right? You can see I have the the, the possibility, corrective action close out. Yeah, so I can select, obviously. First of all, I'll go through the feedback from the ODT, right? And then select the respective uh, response for the uh, non-conformity itself. Yeah, like one, two, like this, one by one. And then apply the corrective action close out. That would be, let's say, the entire cycle of the organization's scheduling or planning the audits, conducting the audits, and 
being able to manage the closure through a digitalized version. It doesn't require any follow-up face-to-face, let's say, purely because, or via email, purely because the software, it does it, right? It doesn't, uh, into the software will always be the latest version of the standard, right? Um, and the users would have access to all of the information based on their own rights, right? Like me as an auditor for one site, if the organization uh, defines, I should not see the records of other sites, then that can be managed through what we call business rules inside of the, um, inside of the software. All right. Okay. As well, me as an auditor, just to close out, let's say, I have the ability to extract reports based on my preference. Whether I'm a, an auditor or an auditee, I have the ability to choose and extract reports directly from the software. Okay. So with that being said, I think um, I have been able to go through the entire um, cycle of the conducting an audit using a digitalized version of our software solution, EWQMS. And by the way, EWQMS stands for Enterprise Wo Worldwide uh, Quality Integrated Management System. Okay. Okay, Andrew, we do have uh, four questions here. So yeah. um, the the first question, Audit Pro, can Audit Pro an manage any standard? Uh, and the answer to that is yes. yes. We, we can put any standard into Audit Pro. Yes. Uh, we could also put in the customer specific requirements within Audit Pro as well. Yes. Also, I would like to add here, Roy, the fact that even if the, the each, even if the organization has developed its own standard that can be added into the audit pro. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and that's always a good thing because basically the layer process audits right there, you come up with your own questions on that. So, and they can be changed very easily. Yeah. Okay, uh, the, the next one, uh, there's several questions here, so we'll take it one at a time. Um, uh, larger organizations for IATF, you know, we need to have a three-year audit plan. Yes, we can do a three-year audit plan. Okay. Yes. Um, but uh, we would not use a checklist, nor would we audit the same thing over and over again. Uh, no, you do not have to use the checklist within right. Audit Pro. Um, however, when I do this, I, I'm not putting in questions I want to ask. This is something generic that's going to go with every process I'm going to be auditing with. Okay, these are just some things I want to make sure is being taken care of. Um, so, you know, no matter what the process is, I'm always going to end up finding out what's the roles, responsibilities, and authorities. So I want to see a job description. And it's just a little reminder there that I want to go and get that. Okay, I want to look at records. So I'm going to be looking at multiple things as I do a process. So you can use this checklist however you want, okay, um, or don't use it at all. Um, so, and, and yes, uh, you know, in the experience, most of these systems are designed for a checklist based audit. Uh, if I ever see that, I write that up as a nonconformist and not following the process approach. So no checklist. Uh, I, I try not to use checklists. I, I like to call it facts to be verified. These are different things I want to verify while I'm auditing this process and also looking for the linkages. Um, Next question, uh, I like the idea of uh, the standard being included in Audit Pro. What about uh, internal quality management systems, uh, the PMAPs, procedures? Yeah, absolutely, you can put those in there. Okay. Um, and I'll let Andre answer this. Uh, does our software play well with the Power BI? 
yes we can integrate uh, we can integrate our platform with <laughs> with multiple platforms as well um i hope answer uh, to i answer to that question yeah yeah uh okay next one in ihf you'd rarely speak with one person uh one oddity we're going to be looking at several processes several people uh looking at their ink yes we can do that within our software as well yes you can i'd like to just add a few words here you can have like a team right which is which is part of that audited area and all of the team members would, would would receive the same information, but you'll have a designated team member, which is going to be responsible for the audit report itself, and definitely inside of the defi uh, inside of the audit report, um, in, like actions can be allocated to different users as well. But the users also are going to be part of the uh, software solution as users. Okay. And I think I answered the last one about uh, documenting customer specific requirements and customer requirements. Yes, that can be added in there as well. Yes. Change being part of the integrated system. Can cost one check this. Uh, Carlos, yes. So can, can customer check this? Yes, we can import um, any Excel spreadsheet inside of the software. And also, uh, can we can integrate our software with, with also other platforms. I hope that answered your question, uh, Carlos. Yes, that it is possible as well. Protect against changes, yes. And anyway, to add to this, um the audit pro it is also role based uh, created meaning to say that we can define only one specific person who's going to be responsible for the managing of the entire suite okay all right thank you thanks uh, thanks carlos thanks michelle um, um uh, thanks uh, tino for all of the questions really good questions i hope or we hope um we have answered to all of your questions can only with manix erp um i would say yes but we we would need to understand a little bit more um if there it is any um i don't know if, if there is any difficulty of integrating with Manix ERP. We have a specialized team for the integration and definitely uh, it, it doesn't have to be one module. If, if one module uh, can, then all of the modules can as well. Okay. Any other question? Thank you, Tim. And thanks, Tim, for joining our, our webinar. I hope it was comprehensive, but also um, gave you enough information so you can understand the uh, difference, let's say, of, do, of, of doing the audits um, with Excel spreadsheets or with Google Sheets or you name it, or doing it having a having a software solution such as ours all right so thank you for your time let's allocate one one more minute and the, then we can probably wrap and close the session
All right. If there are no more questions, I'd like to say a big thank you for joining our, our webinar. Um, thank you for all of the questions. Thank you for your interest. And uh, we're looking forward to getting in touch with you. Roy, thank you very much. Yep. Thank Have you. a good day, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.